Hello everybody and welcome back to Rose Lane. I want to take this just a couple seconds to thank everybody who's been subscribing to my channel. I am so appreciative of that and I'm really hoping that you're all coming back to uh, take a look at what else is going on. It is my hope that today we're going to finish up this second book. Um, we worked, well didn't actually work on this, we did a um, flip through of this and some people were asking um, if I could show them how to do the spine and some of the other things so uh, we started on this one and I've been working in between so most of this is finished at this point um, I finished these tags uh, and other things what we're gonna work on today is what's gonna go right here which is the pocket that's that overstuffed pocket and we're gonna work on the front cover and the closure. So that's what we're working on right now. We're gonna start with the pocket um, somewhere. Okay, I did. I have everything ready to go in the pocket. I just wanted to show you what I did. So what I did for the pocket in here, let me reach over. I'll undo this, put that up there. This pocket is a muslin pocket and I wanted the the edges to be pretty sturdy and I don't know if I hold it up um, that paper clip came off from someplace you might see that around the stitching here there's a little bit of a, like a more solid color that's because I used a piece of cardstock underneath it so what we're gonna do today is we are going to take our muslin and how I cut my muslin I cut it to fit so I could fold it around the edges but how I cut it was, if you can see, I cut it so that the top edge, my top edge is going to be, well, I'm using the selvage as my top edge. So it's a good, solid, finished edge, okay? And then what I did was I just first glued this on right around the edges. And then I did stitch um, on this one, which I probably will, um, again as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just glue around the edges real quick. I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac just because of what it is. I'm going to glue around these edges, hopefully just a little bit because mostly just to kind of hold it in place. What I want to really hold it down is the um, stitching, which I'm going to have to do kind of carefully and I think I just got a little too much right there so let me get rid of that and we're gonna line this up then the unglued side with the top and it does not have to be absolutely perfect you can see that the um, the fabric is just a little kind of off because you'll see what we're gonna do with this in just a little while so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to snip these corners a little bit okay and I'm going to fold these in again just at the edge here like so fold them in and I'm going to just take my craft knife and I'm going to bring that corner in just a little bit so I can tuck it in, tuck it down, and I'm going to bring, flip it around a little bit so it's hopefully easier to see. The same thing here, I just want to keep that, that little edge in, okay? A little bit more in the middle here. I'm going to flip this around, we're going to tuck that little corner in and we're gonna flip this little piece over. Okay. And that gets that in that place. Okay, before I go stitching anything, let me get this guy out of the way for a minute. What I did on this one, and this was an afterthought on my last one, is I stamped. I stamped after the thing got in, after I put the pocket in the uh, in the piece. Today, I decided instead of stamping, I'm going to stencil. So I've got this 
really pretty rose stencil. I want this piece in here and I'm going to do it with a little bit of color. So I'm just going to try to put it, I think, right about there. Okay. So I'm using Tattered Rose Distress Ink. I'm going to try to be very careful holding this down. And I'm going to try to do these roses. Let's hope this works. And just lightly go in. I don't need a whole bunch of color. I just more want the impression. I'm going to even do these little flowers over here. So I'm going to try to get those done. Then I'm going to take my bundled sage and I'm going to try to go over these little leaves and I'm just kind of putting it on the end. I'm, I'm hoping you're, that's in the frame. Uh, so I have a little bit better control over where I'm putting the color. I'll do these little stems here. And it's okay if it gets a little darker in some sections, a little lighter in others. It's okay. Uh, I think I did that flower, so we're good there. I'm going to try to move down a little bit. Continue with my green, since that's what I mostly have. Over on this side. Okay. A little bit more there. Let me look at this pink a little more. And I think, put that little flower in there, a little bit up here maybe, because I think I did those leaves. It looks like I did those leaves. And I think that's good. I just wanted a little something, okay? Just a little something on the, um, on the pocket so there was a little bit more color. A little bit more design instead of just the plain. I'm going to put my inks away. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin over to my uh, sewing machine. And that's off camera, though it's next to me. And I'm going to try to just stitch these, um, just stitch these edges down. And I'll be right back. I'll make a little noise while I move my chair. I apologize. And let me get this on. I'm going to go this way, and oh, I think that one's fine. All right, let's get this in here. It's a very old sewing machine, so I do apologize for very loud noise. I'm going to switch my plug here, Oh, I will need this again later. I only have two outlets right here because I work in my basement at the moment. All right. So let me just get this stitched around the ends and I'll be right back. Of that while I'm thinking of it I need to plug my heat gun in because we're going to be using that briefly a little bit later all right so I'm going to get rid of those threads because it's no big deal move my chair back over and I'm going to take my distress ink in my um, brush corduroy I just want to kind of go over the edges of the pocket a little bit maybe darken up I'm just using kind of a linen colored kind of natural colored um, thread. So I figure just to add a little bit more dimension since this is supposed to be kind of, kind of grungy. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my little scissors and I'm gonna come in here. I wanna pull the fabric away and I wanna stick my scissors. If you can see that, can you see I'm going right in there and I'm gonna just cut along inside this pocket as best as I can. I'm cutting away all this extra cardstock. I'm gonna fold this back so I have a better 
access to what I want to cut away. Get rid of that. We can get rid of that. All right. And then we're just going to try our best to cut down this part here. As long as you don't cut through <laughs> the front part. As I say that. <laughs> okay, there we go. Good. All right. Now we can get rid of that piece. So what that does is it gives us a nice, um, sturdy um, edge to the pocket. It makes it a little stronger. So, and then like I said, it didn't. Like I said, it didn't have to be perfect because you're going to cut a, cut that all away from the inside. So that's what we have left. So I'm going to put this old book back over here, or the first book back over here. And now we're going to focus on getting these things glued in. So we're going to go to our page. This is my little group of uh, what I've done to go in the pockets. And what I did here is I measured, you can see where you glued it down to the pleat on the accordion, it leaves a, a little bit of a fold. I think maybe, hoping you can see that. I wanted to stay inside that. So that's where I measured so I'd be inside this little part where it would crease and I'm just going to glue it down here and we'll use the Fabri-Tac and then just glue it into place. Okay, one side, two sides, and the bottom. This is very stringy Fabri-Tac. Okay, so I'm going to put it over here, try to get it as straight as possible, particularly without putting my head in the frame. I think we're good there. Okay. And we're going to let that just sit for a minute. And while that's sitting, press the corners down. I've got too much on here. I definitely cut the hole in this glue too big. I didn't think I did, but I guess I did. It's gigantic. Okay. So we're going to let that sit because we still have to edge this pocket. So this was the other pocket that I put up here. As you know, that I had another. Uh, pocket up on the top and the other one that had shorter pieces in it uh, that I didn't want to put down in the front here because I didn't have tall enough pieces to go behind it so I just sort of reversed it. So this is the same size as this pocket here. I cut this out of one of the collage sheets which is this. It came out of here and I edged it with a little piece of matching paper to reinforce because like I said mostly almost everything I do I just do on um, regular copy paper because sometimes, most of the time, it's going to be a page in my books, in my journals, um, and then sometimes I make them into tags, who knows, and if I, that's what I want, I just glue them to something. So I'm going to use my, uh, actually let me do some inking on this guy. Sorry, I usually ink before because y'all know how to ink, I think. So we just want to put that and get rid of those white edges and put a little bit more interest on there. Move that over. Hold it at the top. And really what I want to do is make sure that I have it far enough down for the piece that's going to go in it. So I'm just going to unclip this. Now this is the postcard that I did and this is from Artie Mae's um, Dragonfly Dreams, and I put one of the, I think it, it this may be one of her uh, butterflies, it may not be, uh, I forget where I get them all from, and a little cheesecloth behind that. So what I want to do is I want to make sure when I put that in, it's going to be not sticking out the top. So if I do that and then put the pocket up high enough, you can see that this is far, 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 far to low. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to glue this where the other one was glued up a little higher because that was a smaller um, postcard. I'm just going to put this down as close as I can to this pocket. I'm going to glue it down really well. It'll just sort of be an extension. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to kind of just do like a, a thicker bead, maybe off camera there. Try to keep my hands where they belong. I'll do a little bit of a thicker bead there. I will put this right up against the bottom of this pocket. It should not have any issues. So I'm just going to use the corners as my guide. It'll show me where I want it to be. Get rid of the extra glue. Put that down there. All right, and let that set. I'm hoping that that will now, yeah, that should go in without poking over the top, or at least not very much. If for some reason I feel like it is really just too long, I'll just trim off an end and I'll just re-round the corners, re-ink. And I'm gonna show you something else where in preparation I had made um, a little faux pas that I had to fix. So sometimes things are um, not quite working in your favor and you really can't do them over because of the stage that you're at and there may be little things that you can do to sort of fix it a little bit. So what we're going to do here now as I showed you this the other day um, about the braid that I did. So this I have this kind of wire drawer like wire weave drawer. That's where I clip or tie everything onto if I'm going to braid it. In this case, because it's not the embroidery floss or something that I did before that would be small, I used the bulb pin and clipped it. I tied a knot around that and then I clipped the bulb pin to the little wire on the drawer and that way I could start braiding right from the very end, right from where the knot was. So I can take this off now because I was only there to show you, to remind me to tell you what I did or how I did it. Um, I'm going to pull that just a little tighter. I clipped this down and I just snipped it a little bit, snipped the um, seam binding into little pieces and just sort of pulled at it to make kind of a messy little tassel and we're just going to glue this down. Then we're going to uh, find where we want the end. This tassel is going to stay inside the book here. I know the end is going to go here. So what I'm gonna do with this now is I'm gonna take a little bit of thread. Now this thread is for something else, but I can use it here. I'm gonna bring this needle up through uh, where I believe, I hope, I want it to end. And then all I'm gonna do, if I can do it, because it's really long, is wrap it around several times. Try to get it all in the same place. I've got a lot of thread and this long, you know, piece of ribbon. Okay, that's good, I think. I'm gonna bring my needle back and I'm just gonna tack this down, get a knot in there. So we just do that and just do it a couple of times and it might be wise to do it in a couple of places because the purpose of wrapping this thread around is to keep the, whoops, sorry about that, is to keep the ribbon from unraveling, you know, coming undone. So if we can go all the way around it in, you know, maybe three different places, which I think is what I just did, um, and then just knot that off, we can, I keep catching it on the end of the book, we can, uh, and I just made a mess out of that one, but that's okay. Pull as much as you can in and get these scissors. That's gonna be on the bottom anyway. So it'll all be glued down. I'm gonna put a knot in this thread because I'm notorious for snipping the last of whatever I was doing and still needing the needle. And then I start again and pull it right through. So, okay, so we have that, and I'm gonna just snip the edges of this just a little bit to make it cleaner, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna glue this part down right along here, okay? Then I'm going to cut this over here to where I want it, probably a little bit, well, you may not be in frame here, uh, a little bit longer. I'll snip that off, I'll snip the edges like I did before 
and that'll be that. So we're going to glue this down. Get my, uh-oh, that was bad. I just dropped the, <laughs> the cover, the uh, little red end on the floor. So I want a good piece here. All right. I do have another, another old bottle that's pretty empty. So I'm going to put it this way. Now what I found, which you can do on paper with a lot of things, and you can do also on the fabric, is when I over glue, I just take my uh, craft knife and I go, I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing, because I've got some glue that oozed out here. turn it this way so I can get anything that may be at the top as well. Though I don't seem to see as much here. That one's actually pretty good. All right, I'm going to push that down a little bit better. We got to let it sit for a minute because this does give us a little bit of time. The um, Fabri-Tac does give us a little bit of time to uh, to maneuver it, which also means it gives us a little bit of time to let it set. So we have that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. I'm going to take my paper clip off, which is what was holding it in place all this time. That goes back there. I'm going to cut it off where I think I want it. So I want a decent sized little tassel. And holding this in place, well, first let me un unbraid it, which now that it's been sitting here braided for a while, it's probably going to be a little kinky. It's not going to be, um, what do you mean, you know, it's going to be a little, well, <laughs> a little kinky. It's going to be all kinds of kinked up and, and wiggly looking. So we're just going to undo that as carefully as possible. I'm trying to be careful because the glue is probably still setting. All right, then because it is all kind of crinkled up, try to open up each piece as best as you can. This is a little fiddly because we all know how sensitive the uh, and fragile the seam binding can be. I'm not looking to be perfect. I'm just looking to sort of open these up a little bit and make them look a little bit more like a tassel and less like just the ribbon hanging off the end. So we will do that. I'm hoping you're able to see this. I'm hoping I'm not too, too close because it gets a little scary looking. So just trying to be careful with that. And now over to the green one. Excuse me, I had an itch. We'll open this one up. So while I'm doing this, I will take a little bit of time. Some of you are aware, I think, that because of my work, my husband and I are ordained ministers uh, for the same church, and we will often get moved around as needs need to be met in other places. And uh, we are being moved, and I knew that was coming. Um, and we are actually going to be moving, actually leaving here. Uh, I've said before, I'm in New Jersey here, right outside of New York City. We're actually going to be moving to the other side, <laughs> and that is Buffalo. Uh, for those of you who don't really know where Buffalo, New York is, it is, I, this one keeps twisting on me. Buffalo, New York, where we're going to be, is about uh, 20 miles or so south of Niagara Falls. So that's a little bit of a world landmark. You know, this is the last one I'm trying to do. You think it would cooperate with me? Of course it won't. I'll do my best. Um, it's about 20 miles south of Niagara Falls. So it's a six-hour drive from here. Um, see, I knew that wasn't going to work. And... Um, so I'll just trim it down. It's about a six hour ride from here. 
And we are going to be moving the very first few days of August. I kind of like that. I think that looks good. I'm hoping this isn't too close. Let me see if this is too close. Mm, let's raise you up just a little bit. I think that might be better. Okay. Um, so in any case, that's where we're going to be heading. So pretty soon I'm going to have to pack this up. My husband, of course, is saying, pack it all up now. And I'm like, no, I have things I have to do. So... <laughs> Um, I'm going to try to do some videos ahead. I'll, I'll be working on some things, you know, in these next couple or three weeks, but I will po po be postponing when they're actually going to air. So it won't be as frequent as I've been doing some of these. It'll probably be anywhere from 10 days to two weeks so that the, the projects that I can get done before I actually have to pack up all this stuff, um, I will get those done and then I'm going to spread them out over the rest of the summer so that when it shouldn't be much more than 10 days to two weeks when I actually come back now I'll be in Buffalo doing the work and we'll just pick up from there so since I've got so that's my little commercial so know that that's coming and I really apologize because I really don't want to have to <laughs> pack everything up and move it and not work on this stuff for a couple of weeks uh, for a couple of months I'm sorry um, but you know, it just is what it is and that is how it goes. So back to work. So since I've got these roses over here and very, very light, um, leaves on this side, I'm going to take this little cluster that I made and this was just a bulb pin. I took a piece of the ribbon, a little piece of this kind of sorry, silky kind of stuff, a little shred of, uh, lace here, one of, um, Artie Mae's tags, little tag numbers, which I did not do with the uh, embossing glaze. I did this with, I did this with, I always forget the name, Glossy Accents is what I used on there. Um, poked a little hole in it and just put everything on here. So I'm just going to take this bulb pin and I'm going to put it through a little bit of that ribbon and we're just going to hang that little cluster right off of there. And that's all we're going to put on the pocket for that. So for this, we're going to start filling the pocket. So this is that Artie Mays. Um, we want to lift this up because this is one of those little butterflies that I had done this a while ago. So I just pulled it out of my stash. Uh, we're going to put that in here. And that's not too bad. It does stick out over the top a little bit, but I'm good with that. And then here's all the rest of the stuff that I did for the pocket. So I did this little... Um, you know what I need to do on here while I'm stuffing the pocket and I have one out because I did not do that. I did it everywhere else. I do believe we have to do my wink of Stella on the, I'm squeezing a little more down, um, on the wings here. I just really like having that and it may not pick up real well on the camera but when you see it or use it yourself um, in, in real life you know not on camera uh, it really does make it just sparkle a little bit just a little um, I don't know it's not really I, I don't want to call it glittery because it's not really glittery not to me Anyway, it just gives it a sheen and a little iridescence almost. So that's what we have there. And that doesn't take long to dry at all. And I'll wiggle it a little bit so maybe you can see it. And in the meantime, we're going to put things in the, in the uh, pockets. So I made another little card like this. And I this also was from... Uh, the Artie Maze kit, uh, the word magical. So I just stuck it on a little cardstock. I did a little edging on it to make it kind of look like maybe rusty metal, uh, but I decided to put it on here. So I covered the hole with some cheesecloth, a little bit of uh, coffee dyed paper. That's all that was. And then that's going to go in there like that. And then I had these, which are the same as the ones that were in the other. And they're going to go down in this pocket. I don't know what that one is. What is that? I don't know. What is that? Something. 
So we're going to trim that little guy off of there. Good enough. So that one goes in there. Then in the other one, I had a library card. So that one's going to go in there. Then here's another little folded tag, and that's going to go here. And then these were the ones similar to the ones in the other book where I had the pink camellias on here with a green background paper. These I did a little bit different with these kind of wildflowers with the red paper, but instead of just making them a tag, I made them a fold out too. And I found this paper uh, lurking about in one of my cabinets, and it's kind of pearlescent if you can see that, which I thought was kind of, kind of neat. So I made little folders out of those and use that paper there. So those go in here. This was laying on the desk and I thought, what can I do with that? This is not in the other in the other book. So I just took a bigger piece and put it on the inside, put the smaller fold over on the outside so it has this green edge, but made it into like a little tiny kind of booklet like that. I don't know where I'm putting this. Um, <laughs> I may just put it just in here just because and then, of course, then here's one of Angela's, um, I think this was number, I can't remember. I'll put it in the comments. I'm sure I'll get the right number. It's either 13 or 15. On this one, where I did on the other one, a little linen thread with one of these uh, little, you know, claspy things. This one, I just glued the thread to the back. I mean, I'm sorry, glued the ribbon to the back. I left it plain. And then I did it this way. On this one, I actually put uh, a little piece of paper in, which is something Angela uh, suggests that you can do. So I did put a little extra piece of paper in there. And I did put small little tags um, in these, or little journal cards, tiny little journal cards in these pockets. Now I put them in this way, you can put them in this way, but they were kind of a little short for that. And I thought they just, added more color to the front if I, you know, to the green part if I just did them that way. So I just have to remember which way that goes back in. And then these just, oops, wrong way. Let's fold you that way, that way. And let's get that tag better in there. This way, this way. And then, so like I said, I glued this ribbon to the back so it doesn't come off. You won't lose it like I would lose it. <laughs> so I was one of those kids that, you know, my mom had to fasten my mittens to my coat sleeves because I would always lose them. So better fastened we are, the better off I am. Well, I am anyway. And then this is just going to go into this front part of the pocket. And then the ribbon hangs over. So now that's that. This part is done. So now we're going to close this up. We're going to go to the front cover. And then I have been working on this, what I was going to do. So the first thing I want to do is I cut ribbon for the tie and again I'm going to just try to peel off some of the glue from my fingers. I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm sure this is nothing new to anybody but I always seem to be wearing it. So what I did was I cut it, I measured it for the length that I wanted and I'm going to glue this down. So let's try to lay this flat. I'm not actually going to glue this down. But what I'm going to do is I want my tie to be over here, okay? So this is going to go around the back the way I do it, and I'll show you how I tie it later. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to try to keep this in place so I have it where I want. I'm going to try to keep it flat, and I cut some lace to go along the edge. So that's going to be the first place where that's going to... Uh, secure this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is try to put it where I think I want it. I want that loop hanging over just a little bit, and I'm going to grab one of these uh, clips so that holds that in place. Okay, I think what I may do is just dot. You're not going to see this, and I did lose my lid. I just want to dot that a little bit to kind of help me keep that where I want it while I'm putting down the lace so it's okay if it comes through a little 
And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue down here, right over this ribbon, and all the way to here. I don't want this right up against the edge of the green. I want it away from the edge somewhat so you can still see the green along the edge of this paper here. Okay. Probably gonna need a, a little wipe here. Grab that, sorry for the noise. Okay. All right, clean my fingers a little bit. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over to the back. I'm going to hope that I've got this all laying flat from the front, which I do. I'm going to leave that there. I do want to bring it so that it has a little bit of, um, you know, so it can close some. Actually, you know what I think I'm going to do here? I will do this, but I'm going to glue because I want a little leeway in being able to pull this ribbon. And if I glue the lace down completely over it, I'm going to lose that leeway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ribbon here. I'm going to just put glue on either side of this. And then I'm going to glue the lace down over that without gluing the ribbon or the lace in this spot. So that's going to leave me the ability to slide that. I don't know if you can see how it'll pull, okay, on the accordion part. Hopefully it won't fall out, but that gives me a little bit of play. Nothing's going to get done to the back. I just wanted this in place while we put, did the rest of this. So this is what I did for the for the cover. So what you're seeing here is that same Aida or Ada, however you want to say it, cloth. This was a little bit of that pearlescent paper that I used before, cut and edged. Uh, this I cut out also from this collage sheet. That's this piece right here. Uh, I cut that out from a different sheet. And I just glued that on top of there. Everything, of course, inked and edged. So what I did with this as I put a little ink, I cut this with my pinking shears, and this is stiff, it's starched or whatever, it, however it is they they make this, this particular one stiff. Sometimes it's very soft and sometimes it's stiff, and this one's working for me. So what I did, if you can see, is I used two things on here. I used diamond glaze, which is this, okay, I don't want to get it too close and I want to hold it still in case the camera's not focusing. I used that on the smaller insects, and I have not finished everything I'm doing on here because I wanted you to see part part of how I did it, at least. So all I did for these smaller insects here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there's three bugs and three butterfly-y moth-type looking things. I just squeezed a little puddle of this out. I took a small uh, paintbrush, let me get the one I used, just this one just a small little paintbrush. I just dipped it into the little pot, puddle of, or pile, of the diamond glaze, and I just painted it on very, very carefully. Just painted it on. That's all I did to all of these little, these little bugs, okay? Then what I did for these, and I'm gonna see if I can turn it so you can see it. I'm gonna stand up to see if I can see. I really can't see. But if you can see, if I hold it like that, you may be able to see that their bodies are somewhat raised. The dragonfly bodies are a little bit raised. That's, I used glossy accents. So I did the glossy accents on it. I let it dry and it does have to dry for like six or eight hours. I did it once, then I went back and I went over to build up on it again a little bit. So the dragonfly bodies are done with two coats of this. So I did it once and let it sit overnight. The next time I took it, I did it in the morning and let it sit so that when I came home from work, it would be ready for me. 
Then what I did, because you know I have to, is I used my Wink of Stella. So I went over the Diamond Glaze and I went over the Glossy Accents with the Wink of Stella. That being said, it didn't want to really dry. Um, I suppose if I left it long enough, it probably would have, but you know, I was kind of in a hurry to get this done. So I took my finger, I figured, okay, if it's not drying, I'll just wipe it off. And I took my finger, but it didn't exactly take it all off. What it actually did was it kind of dulled down the shine, the, the clear glossy shine of the diamond glaze and the glossy accents and left almost, and it's hard to see, I'm gonna hold it up. I'm gonna try to see if it'll focus. It left almost like a mother of pearl finish. Well, you might remember in one of my earlier videos, I said those happy accidents, well, there's one. And so it took away that really bright shine of the of the glaze, but left sort of a, a mother of pearl. It left behind a little bit of this, uh, this glittery thing in it and softened it. So it really looked pretty. Now here's the other thing that happened, and I think I saved it. Uh, cleaned up the table and I probably did not, which was kind of silly, because I really wanted to save it to show you what I did. But anyway, what happened here, this was a very fine body, and this uh, Glossy Accents doesn't have a very fine tip, not exactly, and it's real easy to have it spread. So when I did this, it did spread out over here. So what I did, this is like I said, when you make one of those mistakes and you really can't go back and you don't want to have to start completely over, I just trimmed with my craft knife along the edge here, slid my craft knife underneath the, the hardened glossy accents, which did take up the color on the paper. And then all I did was I took my um, antique linen on this particular paper because it would match. I took my dauber and I just went in, filled it in. And you can hardly really tell that that's what happened. And now for the other thing I did. I took this picture, which was this one, printed it on vellum, which I have a second one here someplace. Let me see if I can find what I did with that. Here it is, okay. I printed it on vellum, okay? And then I cut out just the parts of the dragonflies that had the wings, like this, okay? I did the small ones first because they were tiny and they'd be harder to see. And there's separate wings on this dragonfly. I cut the wings out. I put Wink of Stella on them, which I haven't done to this one yet, but I will. You're going to watch me do here on the bigger dragonfly what I did here. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and move it to the side while everything there is setting. And I'm going to get my Wink of Stella. Oop, opened it backwards. And I'm just going to put the Wink of Stella on here. And this too did not want to dry right away. I think I have a hair on this. It seems like something's dragging there. It didn't want to dry right away. That's better. So this is why I needed my heat gun. So we're going to do that. I did it once, dried it with the heat gun, and then went back and I did it again. And I'm hoping I'm not too close to the camera, but I'm trying to hold it up so that I can um, move it if I have to without trying to grab off the table. So that's this one. So yes, I'm going to turn on my heat gun in a minute. I did it only on um, the lighter setting. I have a two setting, so I did it on low. And uh, Hold it here and just dried it. Okay, let me put that back here and 
Then I did it. I did it again, just to give it a little bit extra shine. This is such a a neat little thing. When I first started to do these journals, and I'm you know watching the videos of all these wonderful crafters doing all these things and they're pulling out all the stuff I never heard of and you know I'm watching on my my computer um you know watching the videos and then picking up my cell phone and going online to Amazon and like you know plugging it all in and putting it in my list and oh my lord just amazing but this stuff is just awesome one of my favorite things okay I'm gonna dry this one So I'm not sure who was the first one that I saw use it. It was either uh, Gail Agostinelli or maybe it was Wendy from Wendy's Junk Jour uh, Wendy's Journal Adventures. Uh, one of them, and I just dropped that right on my list. So now what I'm going to do, I flip these over, and just once I'm going to apply this to the back, just to have the back done just a little bit. You really won't see it, but. Um, I think I felt it would probably, it could only, I would think, enhance it. So this was, you know, trying to come up with ideas about what I thought I would want to do on the cover. It was one of those, I wonder if I do this kind of sessions, uh, trying to come up with this. I've never tried to do this before. And I thought, what if I do this and maybe I can do that and I could, I could do this and yeah, so, and you know, it just keeps building and building until it all gets carried away. And it's okay if you're not perfectly in the lines on this, uh, cause we're going to cut these out. So as long as you're, I'd rather you be over the lines than, um, you know, than, than inside the lines too much. All right. This is not going away yet because we will still use this, um, but this is going to be the last for the wings anyway. So I'm going to hold this down again. Okay. Now, something I'm going to do while I cut these out and finish it off, I'm going to get my, um, I don't need the book, I just need the piece. I'm going to get my art glitter glue, and I'm just going to go with a thin line here, here, just a little bit where the, where the wings are coming out, actually, from the body, just a little space away. I just want to put little lines of glue. It's there. It's going to dry just slightly raised, of course, than the rest of the paper, and it's going to help with keeping the wings to sort of stand up away uh, from the paper. So I'm just going to put that over there, let that dry while I cut these wings out. As soon as I find my scissors, they're right here, put that over here. And we're going to just real carefully, I'm going to just try to hold it from the one end, and we're going to real carefully just try to cut these out. And again, it does not have to be absolutely perfect um, because what you want, well, I'm going to, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do while I'm cutting these out. I'm going to take the um, antique linen uh, distress ink and I'm going to go 
around the edges of this just a little bit. Uh, it's not terribly noticeable, but it is somewhat noticeable. Now, all I'm going to do for right there is just cut in here until I get this side because I need the stability here. Okay, so that goes there. And then I will come back and cut that away. So we're going to go to the other side now. And cut on this side. So like I said, I will cut in to these so the wings will actually sit separately. But for right now, I do need the... Uh, now you can see that this cut, it kind of comes into this line here that's really the edge of the picture. It cuts it off in the actual picture. So to kind of help eliminate that, I'm just going to round that out a little bit. So it's not such a straight, blunt cut. Uh, that looks like, you know, something went wrong, like I slipped and cut it wrong. Okay, now these kind of go in like this, and then like this, and then this way, and then this way. I want to cut it as one unit, okay? But now I want to follow this black line here and I'm going to cut that down because that's where the separation of the wing is. But I'm not going all the way to the end. I'm staying in just, oh, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch. If I can get, well, I'll try to do that from there to there, three sixteenths, quarter of an inch. And then you've got the separate wings. So we're going to get rid of my garbage. Make sure we only get rid of the garbage and don't throw away the thing we need. Come on, you little fella. Okay. And then we're going to cut this side. Well, we'll finish cutting this side. So we're going to come down here, go in here, come this way, out this way, and around the edge. Get rid of that part. And then we're going to cut again along this darker line, which is the separation of the wings. We're going to come in here and then stay about 3 sixteenths or quarter of an inch away from the end and you've got your two wings. So now what we're going to do, wrong ink, we're going to take the antique linen, try to get a good bit on there because this is, and I have somewhere, here they are, I knocked over my other glue. I'm just going to hold on to these with the um, tweezers, maybe. And I'm just going to try, actually these are bigger. I don't think I need such a, the, the little ones were really little <laughs> and gave me a bit of a problem. So I'm just going to do this antique linen on the edges of this. I'm just kind of coming straight at it. I'm not trying to, you know, like do this. I'm just coming straight at the edge at a right angle and I'm going to ink those up uh, but we're not done okay and we're going to do the same thing here again it's just adding a little definition hardly noticeable um, unless I put these inked ones side by side with ones that were done that far but not inked and then you could see there's just a it just gives us a little bit more definition. So, whoops, don't stick to my fingers. So we have that. Okay, now I will use my tweezers. I'm gonna put this away. Because now we get messy. We have to try to be careful. And yes, I'm using my precious metals gold again. Shaking it up a little bit because it does separate. It is so old, this poor thing. This is, it's not full. This is the, I never took the foil completely off. So I'm gonna pick up the old, the first set I did. I am gonna try to put this down pretty hard. I'm gonna really squeeze it. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of this gold on the end. And all I'm doing again is I'm coming at it at a right angle. I don't want a big thick edge. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. 
I'm just coming at it at a right angle with my paintbrush. Don't want a whole bunch on there. Just trying to edge it with a little bit of gold. It's not necessary. It is very tedious, but my, I don't know when to stop decorating personality sort of takes over. So I'm just going to pass this between. Okay. And it's getting on the other one as well. And then I'm going to take it from there, go around the outside. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Some people may have steadier hands than others. Some people may opt not to even bother with, ooh, there's a lump. Let me get rid of that lump. Uh, not bother with this at all. Perfectly understandable, not necessary, but you know, <laughs> I look at it and go, what else could I do? Ooh, what if I edge it with the gold? There's those what ifs again. So, so that's all I'm doing with these. Just edging it with the gold a little bit. And something it does do, it does add a little bit of extra dimension to it, a little bit more interest. If you could see how much is on there, it's not much um, compared to, well, let's see if I can get this over compared to the one I haven't done, if you can see. Uh, but it also puts a little bit extra protection on the ends, on the edges of the uh, vellum since it's going to be, I, I know I've got this turned to me and I, I apologize, um, trying not to turn it too much so that you can see what is happening, but I have to see what's happening too. <laughs> um, so it does put a little bit of an extra protection on the edge of the, of the vellum, which is nice. So now when I go between, I want to make sure, which I didn't say before, I want to make sure I have a little on both sides of the brush and then I'm just going to pass it between and it should kind of coat both sides of the wings or both edges of the two wings as I pass through and then do a little bit more and like I said it doesn't have to be exactly perfect it's just to add a little bit more interest I'm really hoping this isn't out of focus because I'm holding it up to you know I'm holding up kind of high um, and that is that so that's what we have there. I'm going to close this up. This will just wash out with water. Even if you let it sit for a little while, I generally with some, some pretty warm water can get it to soften up and, uh, and rinse out. So I'll do that later. I'm just going to put it off to the side for right now. We're going to let that dry a little bit and then we're going to work on putting the wings. Now you can see the art glitter glue is pretty much all but dry where I had it. You really can't see it. It's a little maybe damp right there because I could still see a little white. So while we're waiting for these to dry, we are going to take yes, the famous Wink of Stella. Let me see if I can just move these over so I, they're not in danger of me. And I'm going to do the wings down here put a little bit more out here. This I think is starting to get a little low. So I'm just going to do the wings here I'll pick it up so I can see what I'm doing. Get that on these wings. And I just did this once just so that the wings underneath would also be a little shimmery. I guess shimmery is a good color. I said, uh, I'm sorry, good word. Um, it's not, to me, not really glittery. And so I think shimmery is probably, probably a word I would look, I would use to describe what the Wink of Stella sort of does. So just ever so subtle, but definitely there. So we'll put that on there. This, uh book plate here is just the paper one that comes in Artie Mays uh, kit. Artie Mays and Tracy, their joint effort with um, uh, Nature's Remedies. So I used it again. 
I doubled up on a piece of cardstock, put it in, and then just attached it with a couple of brads through the fabric. And uh, so that's, that's all that that was. All right, the other thing I'm going to do, which I've done on the top bugs, is I'm going to go along their legs very, very lightly, just the tip. I'm going to go along their legs or their antenna or whatever you call it and put the Wink of Stella on that as well. So I did them, like I said, I did them on these top ones. I finished all of those, but I didn't do the bottom ones with this dragonfly, the bigger dragonfly, the ones that were closer to it, so that I could show you what I had already done. So that was just those two, and now I'm going to do it on the dragonfly's legs here. Like that, and like that, and then everything else had been done. So that's all there is to that. This is probably dry enough, so what I'm going to do, and what I suggest you do, this one was a little bit difficult. After I looked at it, I think I actually, this one should have been over here and that one should have been over there, but that's okay. Make sure you're putting them on the right side. <laughs> uh, this one... I think goes, how does this go? Let me look, let me look, let me look. I think it's here. Yeah, okay. That makes it a little easier when this one fits closer to the body shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pick up those tweezers. I'm gonna hold on to that. I'm going to put my glue closer to the body now and closer to the body here. Not here, because if, when you really look at the picture, right in here is separated from the body. So I'm just putting it in there and I'm going to use my knife to push it down. Kind of get rid of a little bit of the extra glue. Make sure that it's sitting where I want it to sit. If you can hear the sound it makes, it almost sounds like real, real wings. Um, if you had ever uh, found a bug that wasn't alive uh, anymore, uh, a cicada or a, a dragonfly or something, if you would try to pick it up and their wings had dried, it, it makes that kind of crackly, brittle sound. So there's that one. We're going to pick this one up from the other side. We're going to put our glue down here again as well, right here only because this is away from the body and right here. And I am a little on the body, but that's okay because I can clean it up. So we'll put that in there. We want to make sure that it's sitting where we want it to sit. And you can see when I press down here with the uh, knife, you can see how this side rises up, and that's partly because I'm pushing it down here, but also because I put that little ridge of glue down first. Um, so that's what's happening there. So here are your wings there, and that part is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that sit. I'm going to do something else with ribbon flowers on here. Um, and what I think I'm going to do, because I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably pretty long. I'm not sure how long this has been, but I don't want it to be too long. Um, I'm going to show you the placement of the flowers and what I've done. And this is what I've done for these, these flowers. I've made these little sort of uh, fuchsia type flowers out of the ribbon and put the little stamens in here. And they're going to be placed around here like this. And because they are droopy kind of flowers, they're going to come up on their stems and down. And then I made these little buds, which are really going to go over this way because the heavier flowers will be on this side. I'm going to do this off camera here. Um, and then I will uh, show you the whole book in a flip through, which I'll do probably put up tomorrow once this is all finished. And uh, then in a separate video, I'm going to show you how I made these flowers, how I make the stem. I won't do a whole project. I'm just going to do a, a sample 
of it and how we, we do the little rosebuds, how I did the, the stems here, how I made these flowers and how I did these, you know, these little rosebud things. So you'll learn the rosebuds, you'll learn these little fuchsia flowers, you'll learn how to make this um, stem part and it shouldn't take too, too long. Uh, but trying to do it here would take far too long to do it. I'll just show you how to do the flowers, like one or two, how to do the bud, how to do the little rose buds, and then a little stretch on how you put down the uh, the stem, and maybe how you can even add a few little leaves here and there. I'll show you that as well. So that's going to be a separate video. Uh, probably in a few days, I'm trying to pack up our entire building, which is about 65,000 square feet. That that's It's a long story, but that has to be emptied. This particular building is going to be sold. Uh, and I also have to pack up my house and do all the cleaning, and, and I'm still trying to get this done. So <laughs> so I have to be fair and, and divide up my time a little bit. So this is Saturday. I'm hoping this will go up today, and, and you, the YouTube upload won't give me issues like it did last week. Um, and, uh, I will come back with the flip through for this. I'm hoping by tomorrow or possibly Monday, uh, cause tomorrow is looking to be a long, a long Sunday for me work wise. And, um, then probably maybe, maybe by next Thursday, I'll be back with the video on how to actually make the flower how to attach it, how to make the stem. I'm not doing a whole big project. I'll just do a bit so you can see what I do and then you and then you can go on from there uh, and do your own. Um, so that will be the next one. And I'm not sure what I'm going to be getting up uh, in the meantime, but I will do my best to, like I said, get videos up perhaps every uh, 10 days to two weeks um, through the, the rest of the summer so I can uh, keep you guys coming back to Rose Lane uh, know, knowing that I have not abandoned you and um, that uh, I will be back regularly once I get settled, get everything unpacked and uh, you know get my work going and get my house set up in Buffalo and we will start again but for right now, that's where we are with this. And like I said, tomorrow, um, either tomorrow or maybe Monday, I'll be back with the whole flip through. This The cover will be finished and the uh, I'll flip through the whole inside of the book and you'll see, you'll see the whole piece from front to back. So in the meantime, thanks again for stopping by Rose Lane. I hope we see you again here and have a great day. Be blessed, everyone. Bye-bye.